All right, welcome to today's tutorials. Uh, my name is Dr. Jude Jepu, and like I promised, I'm going to teach you how to take your raw data, format them in a way that you can use this REST 2D inverse to process the data and produce a pseudo section of the 2D WENA array survey. So, what we're going to be doing is that we're going to look at the raw data, see how you're going to do some analysis of the data and how you're going to prepare the data to be able to use the requisite software to actually process it. So uh, we'll start by looking at how the raw data came. So I'm opening this file now so that you see how this particular data came. Now this was the data that was um, given to me, but we're not going to be doing all. We're going to just do a little of it. So the data came in such a way that you see the spacing here, the, uh, the spacing, the electrode spacing is 5 meters here, it's 15 here, 20. And um, these are the readings for the current and for the voltage. So what we're going to be doing is that we're going to get the resistance and uh, calculate the resistance, calculate the resistivity and do all other formats. Now, it is important that you understand how let's build your intuition on how these were actually acquired you know in doing a 2d survey there are several things that uh, it's usually done and this is a setup of a normal when alpha um, uh, sounding now if you take a look at this place you will see n equals one in n equals one what it essentially does is that um, you take a, a, a number of uh, readings from your setup, from your four electro setup. So we have usually you have the C1 here, which is the correct electrode. You have the P1 here, which is the potential electrode. P2, the second potential electrode. C2, the second current electrode. This is the setup that uh, is uh, usually used. And now this example may mix that of a 20 electrode setup and if you look at it if these were to be zero zero meter you end up at 95 meters at this particular horizontal profile that we have here so what it does is that it's at the first reading what you're going to do is you place your electrodes this way and of course this happens to be the midpoint here this is the midpoint and if this were to be zero and this at 5 meters, for example, if A is 5, and this is 10, and um, this is 15, this is for the first reading that you have. You will now see that your midpoint here, because these are some of the data that we need, your midpoint here will be 0 plus 5 down to this place. Because it is 0, this is 5, this is 10. And this is 15 the midpoint here will be 7.5 so that is the way it works so now yeah, there are some certain number of readings that you're supposed to do here to know that you have actually uh, done the right thing usually the formula is um, this but I will show you how it is how it is done let's go back to this place and um, I will open up another uh, data file to show you what I have done. Now, I just uh, mimic this data. I had a copy of this data. So first and foremost, let's go to this place, the raw data that we had initially. This is the raw data that we had. So I had to make a copy in order to do this. So these are the possible readings that you may have for a 20 electro setup if a is 5 meters and n equals 1 then you are going to be having a total number of 17 readings that is 20 minus 3 readings so you are going to be having a total of uh, 17 readings let's go back here and explain what i actually mean so now that you are here this will be the first reading here this is the first and when you want to go for the second reading you start now that your your first your c1 now becomes this one this is this becomes your 
P1. This other one becomes P2. And this five, the fifth electrode becomes C2. Now, in this way, what we are doing is we are starting here and taking the second reading. And that is how we continue this for the third reading. This is fourth reading. This is fifth, sixth, and all that. We continue going uh, until this is finished. Please don't uh, confuse it from these points. You know, so if we check it out, if we check out this, what I'm trying to say is that at this first n equals one, we'll have a total number of 17 readings. So if this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Remember, these readings are with reference to these midpoints here. So this is a midpoint, this is another midpoint, this is another midpoint. So for n equals to 1, you are going to have a total number of 17 readings. So for n equals to 2, what you are going to do is that you start here. That means a equals 10. Now, for n equals 2, a equals 10. So what you are having now is we have starting at 0 here. This is... 10, this is 20, and this is 30. So, this is how we're going to do our first reading. And the midpoint here is 15. So, we'll go 0, 5, 10, 15. So, look at the midpoint here. So, this is where our midpoint is. So, if you continue, you will continue to have... Now, if you move, this is the first reading that you take. The second reading will start from electrode number two and complete to this place. The third reading will start from electrode number three and complete. That's how you continue going till you are done. In that case, what you are going to have, what you are going to have in that case is you are having something like this. For n equals to two, you are having a total of 14 readings. For n equals to 3, you're having a total of 11 readings. So what usually you do is, for the first reading is 20 minus 3, because we have a full set of electrodes, and that's why we are using 3 here. So for n equals 2, it will be 20 minus 2 multiplied by 3, which is 20 minus 6 gives 14. For n equals 3, we have 20 minus 3 times 3, which is 9. 20 minus 9 is 11, and that's how you continue doing this. Now, we also need an important information, which is the information about the midpoints. So, for the midpoint, for n equals to 1, your first midpoint is 7.5 with an increment of 5. So, the first midpoint is 7.5. That means the second midpoint will be 12.5. The third midpoint will be 17.5 um, and so on. It goes with 5. So, when you have the n equals to your first midpoint will be 15, second midpoint will be 20, third midpoint will be 25, as we'll see shortly. So this is how we are going to have this thing. So these are the possible readings that you may have, and I've built your intuition on how this is done for a 20 electrode setup like this. Our data actually varies a little bit because, like I said, if you look at this line here, if this is zero, at the end of the place, we have to, uh, 95 uh, meters, and uh, but uh, the, this, uh, the, the the readings were done for a 100 meter line. So we are ending up having 21 uh, readings. So in such a case, it means that uh, the total number of readings will be 18. In that case, for uh, n equals to one, will be minus three will be 15. For n equals to 2 will be 12 for n equals to 3 will be 9 for n equals to 4 will be 6 for n equals to 5 and will be 3 for n equals 6. So if we total this, we see the total is we have a total number of 63 uh, points that we must have measured. So the next thing we want to talk about is the formula to find k or the geometric factor. It's called 2 pi a for Werner array. And to find the resistivity is the geometric factor multiplied by resistance. So let us go here and see what we must have done. So from this data that we acquired, 
we see the serial number for the first reading, we see that we have 18 readings in all. And like I said, the first midpoint, let's go here. The first midpoint from here is 7.5. So, and we have increment of 5.5. Five. So now from the readings we got, from the raw readings, we'll understand that this one, for example, the current is 127, while this other one, the voltage is 31. So this is 127, 131. So I copied those readings and put them here. And of course, I gave them this title, the headers. Uh, here, this is the current, this is the voltage. How do you calculate your resistance? We know that resistance is V divided by I, and you see from here. So V divided by E4, this is E4 divided by D4. So once you do that and you just uh, double click here, it will calculate all the uh, the uh, resistance for you. Or let's just try, let us delete this and you see what I mean. This is equal to V divided by I. And that's what we have here. So if we double click on this place, we populate all the orders here. And we know that our resistivity from here is uh, the K multiplied by R. So, and um, sorry, we know that K is 2 pi A. So at the end of the day, we are having 2 pi A R. So let's come here. We'll see this formula. We say 2 times pi is 3.142 times A here is 5, and then R is E4, F4 rather, so that gave us this. So once you do the same and populate, now we are having our resistivity here. Same thing with this, the only difference now is our A here will be 10. As you can see from here, we have 2 pi A R, and this is 2 pi A here is 10. If we continue, we we'll now have, for example, here, our A here is 15. So make sure, and our R here is W4. So make sure we actually get all these things right. So what did I do? Let me recall. What I did was that I took from these raw readings here, I took the current readings, I took the, volt meet, uh, the voltage readings, and I pasted them here. I gave them the title. I calculated R by dividing V over I with this formula here, and I calculated resistivity by multiplying by the geometric factor 2 pi A times R, which is for when I array, the geometric factor is 2 pi A. So calculate resistivity is KR, which gives us 2 pi AR. And that's what was done here. So this was done for uh, A equals 5 or N equals 1 to 6. So N equals 6 will be 5 times 6 will be 30. And that is their last reading. And like I said, from this place, possible number of readings at A equals 6 or 30 uh, meters. Uh, I, I mean, at N equals 6 or A equals 30 meters, we have a, a possible number of uh, readings as 3. And that's what we have here. So now let's look at another thing. So now we have the things that we need for the software, all it requires is this, the midpoint, the elect unit electrode spacing, and the resistivity. But then all of them have uh, a particular format that it must uh, adhere to before it, it works. So this is how it is usually when we have this. But then before I get there, let me show you how it actually works. So from here, what we are going to do is we are going to go to where we installed this the, 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 the part of the software and we have it as this. So we have some other uh, files uh, that, that are here and the one we want to choose is this uh, landfill, um, landfill, this thing. So let's open it and we will see this way it is formatted. So we must format our data this way in order to have it. But then you'll be asking, what are all these numbers for? But then let us see what the numbers are for. Okay, this is the 2D setup, sorry. And um, this is this. So, 
So let's have this here. Okay. So now, what we are having is the first line here is for comment. And this one is just the name of the survey that we are about undertaking. The second line gives the number of the units of electrospacing. In our case, the unit electrospacing is 5, right? And then the array type, array 1 is for winner. So that's why we have 1 here. And then the number of data points, like you recall, the number of data points for hour 663 will still come to that. And then this one is the 1 is for the midpoint. This is for the midpoint. So we are using midpoints, one for midpoints. We are not using the unit, I mean, the, the distances of the electrodes, but we are using the midpoint. So the last one is zero for IP data. For example, most survey actually conduct both this 2D and IP together. So if you have this uh, uh, survey together or the data together, you can now use one. But in this case, we only have 2D data. And that's why we are using zero. So you use one here if IP is present and zero if IP is not present. So this particular first value here is for the first data point. For each data point, list the X location. So here is the first A here is the unit, um, the electro spacing and the apparent resistive value. So we have our midpoint here the unit electrospacing and the apparent resistivity value. So we we'll now see how we're going to format this in order for the software to accept whatever we're doing. And at the end of the day, we'll just add some five zeros beneath it in order for it to not to flag with this because it ends with a few zeros and flags for other options. So this is the way they usually format their data. I don't know why it is done this way, but then the people that made the software actually made this thing this way. So this is what we are going to follow. So I've explained this and all we need is to format our data in this way and recall that the first line gives the name of the survey. The second line gives the unit electrospacing. The, the, this other line tells us if it is for winner, for array winner, we are using one. There are other numbers for different configurations but in this case we are using only one this other fourth line tells us about the number of data points in our case it is 63 and this one is for the midpoint if we choose one that means we want to use midpoints and if we choose zero here it means there is no ip data that is available like i said usually some of these 2d data actually come with the run the 2d and ip together and the data actually comes with it so in this case we don't have it and that's why we're having this so the next point will be how do we format this uh, data in order for it to work so what we're going to do we are going to go back to this place copy this so that we don't mess up with uh, the program files and come and paste this thing here so what we're going to do is I will tell you, you have to install Notepad++ because that is what we are going to be using here. A quick Google will give you Notepad++. It's a very small file. You download it. In this case, I'm going to edit this with Notepad++. So Notepad++ is available now. We still have our, our data here. Now, the next thing we are going to do is that we're going to go back to the data Already, I have done this. I placed them in places where they will be. So the the first few lines is this. So all we need to change in this one now is that we need to change this to be five because our unit electro spacing is five, and um, we have to change this. The number of the data points is sixty three, and let's just uh, change this to name it uh, something like test survey. Let's have test survey here. And we know since we're having 63 and we're starting at line 7, we should end up at uh, 69. So let's delete other ones in order not to mess uh, every other thing up for us. So we'll delete this and all the way down, leaving out the zeros. So delete 
So here we go. Now we have this. So the next thing we are going to do is we are going to come here and I will advise that you format this yourself where you have the uh, midpoints. You know, from this data here, we just saw our midpoints to have this uh, without decimals. But in order for this thing to work without hitches, I will suggest that you add um, uh, some decimal numbers. So how do you do it? You click on it and go to format cells. In format cells, you go to number and the number of decimal places will be three. So we would say, okay, same thing with this one. You put it and just say the number of your decimal place is one. Format cell number decimal place is one in order for us to have a very you will come to see why this is necessary so the next thing we are going to do is that we are going to copy this this is first the midpoint we are going to copy the midpoints here copy and come to notepad plus plus and open a new file and paste it here so in order for us to accurately copy this, we have to put this in column mode. Okay, let's go here. Let's see what I'm trying to tell you here. If we open this with a normal notepad, there is no way we can copy just one line here. It's impossible. We have to copy the whole thing. And that is why we are needing the notepad plus plus. Notepad plus plus gives us a means of copying just a column. And in this case, we just say you put it in the column mode. How do you put it in the column mode? You click on shift, uh, shift key, and you, you click on control key and alt key at the same time. Shift, control, and alt at the same time to put it in the column mode, and now select only this. You see how it works. We have selected only the things that we need. Let's go again. Place your cursor here. Click on Shift, Control, and Alt at the same time and select all that you need. In this case, we are selecting all this. So we copy. We go back to the file that we want to edit. What I would suggest is that you just click it at the end here. Use the uh, uh, forward, um, forward key. Uh, the the forward key the arrow the front arrow rather the front arrow click uh, click on it two times front arrow one two yes and from here you just click here hold down the control shift and alternate key at the same time and highlight this only control shift and alternate to put in a column mode and copy only this ones here So what you're going to do is right click and now paste. Now we have successfully pasted uh, this here. So in order for us to have some fidelity, we can just put zero here. You see that everything still maintains its column. So the next one that we're going to do, so let's just delete this and go back and uh, copy the unit electrodes here. So we go back here and uh, copy our unit electrodes so we highlight all of them and copy we we'll get here and paste it then again we click on this place alt control uh, um, shift and copy this data so we copy go back here do the same thing alt control and uh, shift so we now highlight just these ones and right click and paste so we have pasted this so the one that is remaining is this other one so we go back here um, where are you we go back here and copy our resistivity value here so this is what we usually do to format our data 
in such a way that it will be acceptable by the software. So what we are going to do is we click on this place. Uh oh no, we get, we delete this and paste it here. So this is our resistivity values. We go back here. Okay, no, we we'll come here, click here, Alt, Control, um, Shift key, and we copy this data. We copy, go back here, and Alt, Control, this. We highlight all this here, and um, there we go. We have picked all of them. We now paste. Now, so we have our format ready. And then how do we save this? We place it and save as. So we are saving this as a test data. Test data. Don't forget to put the dot that um, extension here. So test data dot that. So we have uh, successfully, so we can exit this. So the next thing for you to do is to come to this place and open up the uh, REST 2D inversion software. Now you will get this message and all that and whatever. This does not matter. It just tells you what you have here. You click on OK. Now the first thing for you to do is to set the parameters in such a way that you'll be able to use this software successfully. If you read the tutorial by look, it explains all this in details, but we don't have time to go through the tutorial now and the book. Of course, I will send it to you if you need it. But the first thing I would go to do is to make sure that we set our parameters right so that we'll be able to do this thing successfully. So the first thing that you are going to do is to read the data file. When you read the data file, what we are using is the test.dat and you click on open. Now it will tell you that reading of the data file is completed. There are several information that you have here and it says the electron survey spacing is 5. We are using when array. The measurements are in apparent resistivity. No user defined depth models, and that's what we are going to be doing right now. The total number of data points is 63, like we said. Position of midpoint array is given, and all that. This is the first minimum and maximum electro locations are 0 and 100, and the minimum electro spacing is 5. No fixed regions. Total number of data level is 6, as we all know. Total number of electrodes is 21, like I told you. All this information has been captured, and it's not far from. He said the first electrode is located at zero and the last one is located at 100. Of course, that is what actually happened. And this is just the statistics of uh, the resistivity, apparent resistivity values, which are between 4.233 and 365 point. And the average is 50, this and all that. So we just he said, you know, your data set appears to show large resistivity variations that the surface for just you can get significant better result by using a model where the cell width is half. The unit so that's what we're going to be doing here he said please refer to section 11.3 of the manual for the detail and that's the manual i talked about so we go okay here so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to edit and exterminate bad data points because most times our data is not perfect and like you see here we have some bad data points so what do we do you just have to look at here point to this place and click on this one this seems to be spiking we are supposed to have a normal flow of resistivity, for example. So all these are a little bit spiking here. This is spiking here. So we can exterminate this. We can exterminate this and exterminate this. The variation is large. And um, this pretty doesn't do much. Uh, this is a little bit high here. And um, we pretty can leave others. But this is a very subjective thing. Depends on what you want to do, you can do that. So. The next thing we do, you click on exit, quick exit window. It will tell you some data points have been removed. Do you want to retain the changes you have made? Of course, we want to do that. So the data set has been updated. Okay. So to carry out an inversion of this modified data, you will need to save the data set and then reread the data. Yes, we want to save it. We are still naming it this test data. We are saving it. We are replacing it, of course. So 
and that is okay by us. So we have to read again and we are reading this. So a lot of things have changed here, but that is not a problem anymore. So we are going to go to the next thing. So the next thing is um, uh, we have to go to the uh, inversion. We have to change settings and the version of damping parameters. We go here and we go to damping factors. So in the damping factors, we have to put some information here. So in this place, all we have to make sure that we are uh, using this, uh, some of this information that is here. This should be 0 0.15, this should be 0 0.02, and use higher damping factor. Um, yes, we'll click on yes, and um, this is five. This is use, adjust this, we click on yes, and um, use higher damping for first layer. Uh, we click on yes for this. And that is how we, we, we want it. So we click on OK. Now, the next thing for us to do is to change the setting of forward modeling, uh, forward modeling settings. So in this case, we have to use our, uh, this, we choose four nodes here. And uh, we use finest mesh in this place. And we are using the finite difference method. And um, disable automatic. So this option enables the product to adjust the mesh size for the finite difference. So we can you we enable automatic uh, grid size. We now click on OK. And uh, by doing this, we now go to the next point, which is the inversion. And we're not carrying out inversion first. What we want to do is we have to choose the inversion setting we have to select a uh, robust inversion while we are doing this is to change some of these things so that we are not using absolute um, rms uh, absolute error but um, uh, rms error at the end of the day so what we are going to do we are going to choose no for here and we're going to leave that at uh, 0 0.05 and we are going to choose no again here and all we are doing is for us to make sure that we're not using absolute error, but RMS error, that is the root mean square error. For this, we leave it as yes. And um, uh, let's limit the resistivity uh, range here. And um, uh, do not enable all the options. No, we're not choosing this. So we click on OK. Yes, so it said we are choosing to automatically allow the number of blocks to exceed the number of data points. Would you like the program to automatically rearrange the configuration of the model? Yes, we want it to do that. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do model discretization. And in this place, we have to do model and um, discretization. So we use the extended model. Use extended model, we click on yes. So this is how our uh, thing will look at at the end of the day. So this is the setup that we've had. So the next thing will carry out inversion. So this is the inversion file that is saved. It says, we want to use this? Yes, test data, we'll click on save. Now the inversion has started running. So this is what we have. At the end of the day, so it says the relative change in RMS error on last two iterations was 4.2%. This is less than the minimum uh, relative change that was 5%. Do you want to continue with the version? Yes, let's continue. We'll do more 5. we we'll click on OK. And at the end of the day, this is what we have. So, but that is not all. And uh, there are some refinements we want to do because if you check this RMS error, it is 52.3%. And that is actually a little bit high. So what we are going to do is we are going to go on display. We are going to show the inversion results. And uh, in this place, look at the inversion results here. So we want to go to edit data and RMS error statistics. So we have here the error statistics. So we see this blue line. So all we need to do is to clip the data by pressing the back arrow key to just minimize some of these errors. So where we have a lot gathered here, we can just shift it to that place. So that at the end of the day, we'll reduce 
this error. So we are trying to cut off or filter some of those errors, the noise that we have. If you see the correlation plot that is here, you see that a lot of uh, uh, noise. You know, this is the data point that was removed. So we need it to be a little bit better than this. So we click on exit and sell. So would you like to trim this data set? Yes, we would like to trim it. So at the end of the day, we use this particular thing. So this is the trimmed data and um, trimmed, uh, trimmed data. So we click on OK. Now we are going to exit this place and we are going to do the inversion. Now we have to carry out. Oh, sorry. We have to read in the file. Now the file that we are going to read now is the trimmed data file. So we are not going to be doing anything else. All we need to do is to carry out our inversion because every other thing is set. And we are naming this the trim data. And so we are going to continue to do this. So if we see uh, at the end of the day, we have uh, successfully reduced the RMS error to this 39 from 50 something percent. Naturally, we are supposed to continue doing this until we have at least less than 10 percent. But if you look at if you are trimming too many data, it may not be OK. Some part of this problem where we're having high error uh, RMS error here is due to the particular uh, um, resistivity meter that was used. It's particularly not very sensitive if you use higher versions or better resistivity meters like the like the uh, um, SAS 4000 and the uh, other other ones. You you may get um, like super sting. You may get better results. So in this case, we have uh, done the modeling. And this is our result. So all we have to do is to save this to a particular file. I'm using a snipping tool here. And I will just um, copy this, just snip this. And that is the file that I am going to save. So, oh no, I made a mistake. Let's quit here. No, let's do snipping again. I actually didn't pick up this test survey because that's the title of the survey. So we go here. Okay, I quickly captured the test survey. Now we are home here. So we do this file. We save this as we go to the desktop. And this is uh, uh, this place. And this is the tests that we have and we have it here so if we go back to the folder we'll see the test and this is how our image appears so that's just about end states and this is for Werner array in our next video we're going to be talking about dipole dipole array and other forms of arrays that we're going to be doing and we can tell you how we're going to do some work on them thank you for watching this video and um